The mission committee would like to thank everyone who donated a coat or a hoodie for the children in Westmoreland County. We had 23 coats and 11 hoodies, along with numerous pairs of new pants, shirts, and other winter accessories. The response was so heartwarming. Thank you again. Also, on behalf of the mission committee, they are going to have a meeting this Tuesday at 1 p.m. Please remember those names that are on the prayer list. Also, pray for the safety and protection of our first responders, police, fire, EMTs, military, and medical personnel. Are there any other announcements? Fred? Yes. Thanks to uh, Don Conger and Linda Kelsey, uh, we now have a preliminary draft budget for our church. And what we're planning on Tuesday evening, 6.30, the stewardship committee, those folks that have been part of our stewardship committee, I'm hoping that they can be there. Plus, uh, inviting anybody uh, that would want to come and be a part of uh, the discussion. It's 6 30 downstairs this Tuesday. Okay, if you didn't hear that, there is a budget that has been prepared and getting ready to let everybody um, look at that budget and see it. And then there's a stewardship meeting Tuesday night at 6 30 downstairs in the auction hall. Any other announcements? Thank you. I want to thank Patty and Jessica Gill, and especially Jessica, because uh, we had the joy yesterday of sharing with Wayne K. Nelson in the marriage of their grandson, Sam, to his lovely bride, Hannah. It was a small uh, wedding, um, but it was wonderful, and I'm so thankful and honored to be a part of it. Um, and thank you, Jess, who worked tirelessly to get everything put back together yesterday afternoon along with me. Um, so we do have that joy that we now have a new family. They're not here today because they're basically on their own mode. But um, we're so thankful, I'm so thankful, that uh, Sam and Hannah plan to be a part of our fellowship. And um, they're going to be part of the Getting to Know You Lunch, and it's coming up at the end of the month. Uh, you can read more about that in the newsletter and on our website. And uh, so, if you are interested in membership, or you've been a member a long time and just want to get to know other people, um, I'm going to be asking the deacons to work with me and help get that together for those three Sundays. And uh, at the end of that, anyone who likes what they heard and likes getting to know us and wants to uh, identify as a member of this congregation, then we will have a membership. Um, that is the class. We'll have a membership group that will bring to the session and then welcome new members. So I'm excited about all of that. Um, uh, Laura shared with me that her mom is home from the hospital, but she's not doing well and she's she herself is concerned. So we want to pray for Helen that God will give her peace and comfort and, and also the whole family and help them to know what, what God's will is as they go. <clears throat> Are there other joys or requests to share? Yes. Uh -huh. Joe Cardinal is one of the active people for the prayers for his daughter. He's Ava. having a few problems. Ava? Ava. Yeah, she's on here, but we want to remember her that she said since she's having more problems. Okay. Yes. Bill, did you have your hand up? Yes. I want to I had gone up for weeks and they great great news. I, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. When she started. Oh yes. That was a great news. She did a great job on that. Yeah, the mama did a great job. She does always a great job. Yes she does. Um someone else. Right. Yes, Linda. Uh, Susan would like to continue to thank people for all their hard Prayers and it's going to be a long road to Susan, but she's still needs the prayers. Thank you. Okay, for those of you who are online, who may not have heard Linda, um, we're continuing to pray for Susan. She thanks you for your prayers and for the cards and for all that you've shown her, all that you've shown her, but ask that you would continue to pray as she's 
um, continuing in pain and, and, and in process, and this is going to be a long process of healing for her. So we want to keep her in prayer. Yes? I'd like prayers for the family of Jackie Aubrey, a friend of mine who passed away on Friday. Jackie Aubrey? Aubrey. Okay. So the family of Jackie Aubrey who passed away. Also, for the CP family, um, Barry CP did pass away yesterday. And so we want to keep you in prayer and your whole family, Donna, um, and especially keep Terry in prayer. It's, it's, it was a rough past couple of months, and um, pray for Terry that God will uphold her during this time for the whole family. Um, let's see. Anybody? Yes, go on. I have a concern. Um, I found out on Friday one of my regular customers had been in the hospital two weeks on a ventilator with the COVID pandemic. <coughs> and uh, her husband was telling me that she finally got off the uh, ventilator on Friday. That he was able to talk to her a little bit, but she just doesn't know anything. She doesn't remember where she is or nothing. So he's just asking for prayers for her. Her name is Roxanne. Roxanne. Can you hear me with this? Can you hear me? Good? Okay, good. So I'm going to use this. So that way when I turn around, you can still hear me. Um, so prayers for Roxanne and for all those who are struggling with COVID. I can't tell you the number of people on my Facebook who, you know, thought we were doing good and they let their guard down. Uh, ministers and, and missionaries and friends um, from all over the world. So um, it's important that we keep safe, but it's also important that we pray for those who are struggling. Um, we know that God is overall, and we trust Him, but we also do our best. So thank you for your masks and, and for at least, you know, when you do sing, if you do sing, holding up either your, your mask or your, your bulletin so that we can all stay safe. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, continue prayer for my brother Rob. We had this conversation and all went well, but uh, he still needs our prayers too. Bob Pelfrey. So we had a catheterization and he's doing well, but still needs our prayers. And my sister Michelle had her fourth surgery, the third on the post surgery, on the wound. And hopefully this is it. And then she's going to be able to go home to recuperate. So. Thank you for your prayers for Michelle and pray that you would keep, keep prayer, praying for her. If there are no other joys or requests, let us continue worshiping God. Please join me in the call to worship. Beloved, we are called to love one another because love is from God. We are called to extend the love of God to all people. We are called to proclaim God's love in all that we say and do.
are new here. Um, I know we had a couple guests. Um, we're glad to have you here. And um, if you fill out a visitor's card or your address is on the book up here so I can keep in touch, I would really appreciate that. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin before God. Will you join me? Jesus, friend and brother, you taught us to abide in your generous love, for it completes our lives and gives us joy. You ask us to love others as you have loved us, for it brings your creation to fruition. We sometimes struggle to love the people in our lives as you have loved us. Forgive us, we pray, and teach us your love. Our New Testament reading comes 
from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Well, let's see. We can have somebody come down here for the children's sermon. Yep, we got one. He's hiding in that. He's got another one. Okay. What else? Boy, 
that would mean something with regards to women. So, if you really believe in God, everything you can say and everything that you do should include God in it. And then other people will say, well, if you believe in God, maybe I will too. Okay? Um, here we go. Let's grab one of these. Thank you for coming up to work. Okay. Abide in my love. If you keep 
my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that your joy may, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're continuing our month of stewardship emphasis. Last week was All Saints Day. We were reminded that no matter what occurs in our lives, we are blessed. We peer into heaven where the saints, people like you and me who believed in Jesus Christ and preceded us to glory, were worshiping and praising the Lord and continue to do so. We were reminded that spending time in God's presence, praising and thanking God, and spending time in prayer is a natural condition. That's what we were made for. Also, that first week of stewardship emphasis reminded us to value life, no matter what the circumstance, because God is always with us, seeking to bless and empower us, and to use our entire lives to accomplish God's will. This week we are talking about the stewardship of life once again, but we're emphasizing our time and our energy. In 1988, U.S. News & World Report did a survey of 6,000 people regarding time spent. And this is the average they came up with, that the average American would spend in a lifetime. Now this is in 1988. Six months sitting at stoplights. Eight months opening junk mail. One year looking for misplaced objects. Now in my case, it's a lot more years than that. Two years unsuccessfully returning phone calls. Four years doing housework. Maybe, maybe less. <laughs> Five years waiting in line. Yeah. Six years eating. Well, for some of us, maybe that's a little more or a little less. But then there was another study in 2018 regarding social media. And that study stated that the average time in 2018 on social media in a day by an adult was 142 minutes, a little more than two hours. Now in 2019 that rose to approximately two and a half hours, followed by three hours in 2020. Now you friends who don't spend time on motion, uh, social media, you're actually pulling the average down. So really the high is much higher than that. And since you don't, if you don't spend time on social media, thank you, you make us look better because you pull our average down. In our current society, um, we look at what can we spend our time doing. Hopefully, we are among those who live a balanced life, who do all the things that we have to do, but we also spend time in prayer and meditation, in Bible study, seeking God's purposes and then doing that. Finding a way to merge together a life well lived with a God relationship that is well formed. However, in our current society, especially, some spend so much time making money that their emphasis becomes that alone. They find themselves like the rich man who had the amazing harvest, who tore down his old barns and built new ones so he could keep it all for himself instead of asking God, what do you want me to do with this harvest you've given me? And we all remember that story where God said, this night your life is required from you. What good was all of that? 
Some are so invested in their, in their families, their children or elders or etc., whatever, all good things, that they find no time for prayer or for worship. Some can't see the forest or the trees. They can't see God's picture because they're so busy looking at the things that are in their way. A preacher once told a group of students that there was a trustworthy way to determine what you love, to look at your checkbook. Of course, this was in the 1980s, and most of us don't carry a checkbook these days. Nevertheless, he told them to go through their checkbook and see what they spent their money on, what their financial priorities were. It can be a sobering study. <clears throat> Today's gospel passage brings us one again, again into the upper room. Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night when he was to be betrayed. He gathered with them and wanted to tell them so much to prepare them, but he had so little time. Now as we look at Jesus' words briefly this morning, I want to discuss what it means to be a friend, especially a friend of Jesus. And how that relationship impacts every decision and action in our lives, or should impact. As we look at Jesus' words, I want to discuss what it means to be a friend. And therefore, we're talking about stewardship. How we use and cherish the friendship with God that we have received. Will you join me as I pray? Heavenly Father, as we look into your word, I pray that by your spirit you would guide my words. I pray that by your spirit you would fill our hearts and our minds. Call us to repentance where needed. Call us to friendship again. Call us, Lord, to your will and your purposes. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that God loves us. As we talked about up here, we've been told that since we were little ones, Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. But too often, that love is little more than a ditty we sing in our heads, rhetoric, something that's a comforting relic from childhood that often has no bearing on our present. Rather than a call to commitment and to action, it's just a comforting song to us. So Jesus gives a command here. So let's see what he has to say. Number one, he says, remain in my love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. What does it mean to remain in God's love? Does it mean to stay Christian, to keep the title of faith, to identify by that label? Or does it mean something much more than that? Now, as Presbyterians, we part the word, we believe and emphasize the endurance of God's love and salvation, that it's without return, that God is going to change his mind about loving us. You've heard the saying, once saved, always saved, right? And this comes from the scripture that says that God's love never fails, and when God has redeemed us, he's not going to turn us away because he casts our sin into the depths of the ocean where no one can retrieve it. However, the pitfall of that thought is that often we forget to fully rely on God to remain in God's love. You see, God's love will always be ours, but we can choose not to remain in that love. So let's look at that for just a second. Remain in my love. You remain in my love. What does that mean for us? I believe Jesus is telling us three things. Number one, while salvation is a free gift, it comes with responsibilities. November, the month when we think about Thanksgiving, that's what living the Christian life and remaining in God's love is all about. Responding in thanks to what we have received. There is nothing more frustrating than a person who isn't thankful, is there? Especially a child who takes no responsibility for the gifts of time and love and everything else they receive, or an adult. And the love of God is no different. Jesus commands us, remain in my love. Now this is a choice that we make. 
Not that we, God will withdraw his love from us, but we can withdraw from God's love. While God's love doesn't fail, our love can wax warm or even cold because we allow the things of this world to overwhelm and overtake us. So salvation, God's love, has that we have responsibility because of God's love. Second, our position in heaven is set. When we believe in Jesus Christ, our position, our, our uh, page number on the book of life was set. We belong to Jesus Christ. But our attachment to the vine is controlled by us. Isn't it frustrating when you're watching, Fred, you're watching your garden, and you've got this really great tomato, and you're looking at it, and that's going to be so good. And then a big wind comes by and knocks it off the vine, and gets bruised, and it's really not good for much. Isn't that frustrating? It gets disconnected from its source. It's still a tomato or an apple or a peach, and it always will be. But it's no longer useful, and circumstance has changed because it's disconnected. Jesus commanded us to remain in his love, to stay attached to the vine, to do whatever it takes to be attached to him. He wants us to position ourselves in such a way that we not only bear the name Christian, but that we also personify that title in increasing measure. So salvation comes with responsibilities. Not that we can earn it, but that we respond to it. And our position is heaven is set, but we must remain attached to the vine by our own choices. And then third, remaining in Christ is not burdensome. He said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now, why does serving God seem so burdensome to some? Maybe it's because it gets in the way of our plans and what makes us happy. Now, the Bible makes a very clear distinction between happiness as we understand it and joy. One writer said it this way. That is because happiness is an emotion in which we experience feelings ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure. Whereas joy is a stronger, less common feeling than happiness. We experience joy when we achieve selflessness to the point of personal sacrifice. We feel joy when we are spiritually connected to God and people. And in 1 John 5, that we read early 3 and 4, um, John said, in fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So second, he said, remain in my love. And then he said, you are my friends if. Conditional friendships, they're not fun. He's not saying he's not going to love you. But he's saying, if you are my friend, this is what you're going to do. He said, love each other in verse 12 and 13 as I have loved you. We've been talking about that a lot these last few months. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Now, my friends, this, friends, this is where the rubber meets the road. Jesus called us his friends. I, I, I had a little girl when I first started teaching children's church. I taught the two, three, four, and five-year-olds in children's church. And one day, in Sunday school, and one day, the pastor's daughter went running up to a guest and said, Do you want to hear my Bible verse? I love your friends, Don Vicky, Vicky. And I can never forget that verse now. So now it'll be in her head. I have called you friends, John Vicky, Vicky. As our friend, he laid down his life to redeem us to bring us joy, to give us eternal life. But in calling us his friends, 
In establishing the relationship, Christ calls us to reciprocal action, to pay it forward, to exemplify Christ's love in what we say and do and think and live. Today we will recognize those who are serving or who have served in our armed forces. While some served because they could go to college thereafter, some might have served because they couldn't find a job and this was going to be a good thing to do. Some served because they believed in the ideals of our company and truly wanted to serve. But it doesn't matter why anyone signed up. I mean, some served because they had to. But it doesn't matter why. They did it. They all served. Each one put his or her life on the line for someone else, for our country, for each of us. And for some, it wasn't until they were on the battlefield and in harm's way that they understood the decision they had made. Greater love. For whom have you laid down your life? Your wife or your husband? Your spouse? Your children? Maybe your parents? Your country? Jesus said, no greater love than this, than to lay down our lives for our friends to follow Christ's example. He explains what he means in verse 16 by saying, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And then he said, I appointed you. He not only chose you to be saved, to be a Christian, to be redeemed, but he appointed you. He gave you an assignment, appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Not just enjoy your life, but to do God's will. See, God didn't simply choose us to assuage our guilt. He didn't die for us and rise again just so we could live a fluent American lifestyle. Not by any means. The Word of God isn't a guarantee of all things pleasing to us. No. Christ came and laid down his life, experiencing a hideous death so that we could be complete spiritually. And that's the point of being a friend of Christ. All the other blessings that we receive, all the good things and the joy and all of that is icing on the cake. Jesus laid down his life that we might bear fruit. And as we serve, as we lay down our lives, our wants, our hopes, our desires, desires, our families, and everything else, to the cause of Christ's calling. He promises, whatever you ask in my name, my Father will give you. You see, we don't have to worry about earning all that money. We don't have to worry about how we'll pay our bills. We don't have to worry about whether our kids will be um, healthy or strong. We don't worry about those things. Jesus said, don't worry about those things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will, there's a positive thought there, Nancy, will be added to you. Seek the kingdom first, and all these things will be added to you. If we truly value the lives and the sacrifices our military men and women made, then we will respect the democracy. We will participate in the freedom that we have received. We will support and strengthen our communities and our world so that all become free politically. But that is only the beginning for the Christian. You see, Jesus called us again to bear fruit that will last. That's not just politically correct, or political things, or financial fruit, or relationships fruit alone. It's the fruit that looks like it came directly from the vine. Fruit that looks like Jesus Christ. As we will recognize the veterans in just a few minutes, I want to ask you, in that great kingdom to which we profess we belong, would you be recognized for your sacrifices of faith, for your commitment, for laying down your life for the gospel? God has given us so great a gift that sometimes we forget the reason for it to love one another and Christ as Christ loved us and to lay down our lives and all that we desire 
So we can do God's work rather than our own. So we can portray God's character rather than our own. So that we can accomplish God's purpose in us and in this world and in this church, the community. Will you pray for me? Lord God, we are so blessed. And yet sometimes those blessings veil our eyes and keep us from seeing what you truly want to give us. Sometimes we forget that Christ laid down his life because of love, but that once we receive that gift of eternal life, of love, that we are asked to remain in that love by loving one another. We pray that you would bless all those who have laid down their lives, not only the military, but missionaries, people who work for the poor, people who do the work that you have called us to do. Help us to lay down before you all the things that garner our time and our attention, that keep us from doing your work and becoming all you have ordained us to be. Forgive us when we have looked in another direction, when we have allowed the desires of this world or the worries of this world to take our eyes from you. Give us the strength and the power to be truly friends of God, that others will see him in us, and they will say, I see something in you. Will you tell me what it is? And we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with one more person. We thank you and praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name.
in prayer for our requests. Heavenly Father, you have seen each name that has been written. You know all the names that were listed. You know all the names that were mentioned, and you even know the names that were not. You see this world, you see those who suffer, you see those who struggle, and especially you see those who need to know Jesus Christ. And so we lift up to you those who are ill, that you would extend healing and comfort and strength. We lift up to you those who are grieving, that you would wrap your arms around them and give them peace and hope and comfort. Lord, we pray for those who lay down their lives for others, for essential workers and EMTs and uh, military and uh, first responders, that not only would you give them wisdom and guidance and strength, but that you would bring them healing from memories that may dog them, that you would give them the strength to be able to go forward in what you have gifted and called them to do. We pray for our brothers and sisters in faith throughout this world who are persecuted for the name of Jesus. Let us not take for granted our freedoms, but continue to pray for them and to support the church around the world that they may continue doing your will as we do yours. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. And we pray in the words your son Jesus taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the church. Day by day, dear Lord, of these three things we pray, to see me more clearly, love me more dearly, follow me more dearly, Day by day. Uh, Jessica, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to join me and help me with something more today. There is a call. Okay. There is a call. Some hear it like a distant thunder. Some hear it like a whisper in the ear. Some just feel it. In their hearts. A deep sense of responsibility to country, to service, to something bigger than themselves. We honor those who are willing to do what so few have done. Because of their sacrifice and service, our country is a light on the hill that cannot be put out. Though many have tried, those who stand and protect it are heroes, worthy of our respect and admiration. Worthy of every minute of attention we give to pause and recognize the hope, the sacrifice, the honor of all who have served our country. When I walk into my church free and without fear, I remember you. When I see children playing in the schoolyard, girls and boys of all kinds, I remember you. When I see families working together regardless of religion or nationality, I remember you. When I go to sleep without worry for my family's safety, I remember you. When I see our flag waving in front of my home, and when I can salute that flag without fear of reprisal, I remember you. When I remember you, I think of the sacrifices you have made so I could have these days. I think of your commitment and your service beyond mere duty. I think of all that you have given 
so that I and those I love can be free. When I pray at night and give thanks for the blessings God has given, I remember you. Will you join me in this litany? Jesus said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. Today we recognize those among us who placed their lives on the line in the military service to protect and serve our country and its citizens. May God give you hope and healing where they are needed, joy in understanding the good work you have done, and faith to use all that is in your past to go forward and show God's love for others. Thank you for your service. May God love you. I'm asking first of all, everyone who served after the military, would you please stand? Come on, Fred. Come on, Fred. Everybody who was in the military, whether you were overseas or not, if you served in the military. Everyone who had a spouse who served in the military, please stand. We want to recognize you for the sacrifices you have made and the sacrifices that your spouses have made. We know that it doesn't end when you come home, and there are always those things that continue on. Um, we have a bookmark for you. I read the front of it. If you go ahead and pass those out now. Um, I'm actually, I think, yeah, yeah, just go ahead and pass those out to everyone who's still. This poem was written for my father many years ago, and it still is true. I remember you, and we remember you, and we want to thank you for all that was done through you and your family that we could remain free. May God bless you and give you strength. And when you speak, you may sit down. You may be seated. God bless you and thank you. Let's and um, for those who have a young man here, please take one for your, your uh, if you have someone in your family who is active in the military, grab another one, please. Um, we'll go and we'll have them up here at the end of the service. Um, I made a lot of them. If you have someone, a neighbor or a relative or someone, please pick up a few more of these. Spread them to everyone. We'll get one for you. Is my dad now? Yes. Yes. You can take one of your mom or if you remember your dad. Okay. Um, um, but please take them, and these are from our church. Distribute them to people that you know who have served, and let them know that we remember them. Amen. God has called us to follow Christ's example of laying down all we have and all we are in thankfulness to God's mercy and grace and provision. As we consider what Christ has done for us, let us determine in our hearts to give back to God what we have received in treasure, talent, and time, that God's will and plan may be evident to all. The offering plates are located in front of the chancel and the windowsill, or you can drop your offerings and tithes in the mail slot of the parish house door. Thank you for your support of our mission.
Thank you. 